so last time we talked, we talked a lot about um, you personally, your health, your story with this. Um, we didn't talk as much about the environmental impact of, you know, vegetarianism, veganism, agriculture, all that stuff. So I definitely want to deep dive into that today. But I do think it's fair to go back and tell your story, how you encountered okay. vegetarianism, veganism, and what that did to your health. I think it's just important to reiterate. Sure. So I became a vegan when I was 16 years old. And I did that in the way that most people do it, which is I met somebody who was a vegan. So I met another teenage girl and her family was all vegan. They were super into being vegan. And within two weeks, she had me convinced. Um, and I was, you know, that kid, I was super impassioned about the state of the world. Um, I felt a lot of despair about what I was seeing even at that age. And it seemed like a complete answer that if I just did this one thing, I could save animals from all this torment, I could save the planet, I could feed all the hungry people, and I could also save my health. So, wow, why not? Why not do this? Um, so I did, and then, I mean, the problem with many of us, this is a problem for human beings generally, is that fundamentalist mindset. Once I was in, I couldn't get out. So I completely wrecked my health. I did it for 20 years. And um, boy, did I live to regret it. So yeah, it's not an appropriate diet, especially long-term for human, humans to build and, and repair and maintain the human body. And it just, it completely failed me. So I ended up with some very serious health problems and many of them are permanent. So yes, let my life be a lesson to you, oh, idealistic young person, this is not a way forward. There's an entire generation of us out here who already tried it. And I can tell you it failed us. All. you cannot do this long term without damage so yeah wow we asked you this last time um, and i think i'm going to ask you again today tell us a little bit about um some of the things that went wrong with your health that ended up coming back when you started reintroducing yeah. animal foods and some of the the more permanent damage that you did health-wise so let's see um probably the most severe thing that never is going to go away is i ended up with degenerative disc disease at five levels of my spine and it's a great four derangement which is as bad as it gets so when the doctors look at my mri they're like wow you were in a massive car accident like no i wasn't you fell off a roof no skydiving no <laughs> i was a vegan i ate <laughs> so kale it looks like it's just like I just ate the completely wrong food for human beings. Wow. And this is where it ends. So I will be in morphine level pain for the rest of my life. There is no way to fix this. That one doesn't come back. Once you destroy your joints, it's gone. Um, you can reduce inflammation. So I'm certainly in less pain than I was when I was a vegan, but it, there's, it's permanent. And I mean, I could get fentanyl tomorrow if I wanted it because it's that bad. Wow. So yeah, but I tell you by the end of my vegan time, I mean, I, I couldn't sit up for more than about a half an hour at a time. And I could only stand up for about three minutes. You know, it's like, so I, all activities were judged in sort of 30 second increments. Um, it's a very, very narrow life. I mean, I spent most of my time lying on the couch and people would come visit me. Um, and it's dramatically better after a year or two of actually eating animal fats and not eating all of those wretched industrial seed oils that create all kinds of inflammation. Um, it just naturally, I didn't repair the discs, but I did reduce the inflammation, which is to say it's a lot less pain. So now it's, I mean, I can sit up for hours at a time and I barely notice, you know, I'm so used to sort of the baseline pain, but it's not like it was at all. And um, I can probably walk about a half an hour at a time. So I can get through airports, which was impossible, you know, before I can go to the movies. I mean, there's all kinds of things that I can do um, that just make your life way bigger. So I uh, will take what I can get, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I did this. I have to accept it. It was foolish. And I did it long past when the point when a normal person would have said, this is not working um, to re-examine. And I just, this is the problem when you're that sort of fanatic person who is desperate to see a better world, you can back yourself into all kinds of corners. And there's a cult-like element here that we have to acknowledge. And especially I think for people who are vulnerable, for teenagers, you know, it's, you don't have all your frontal lobes aren't there yet. You're very susceptible to peer pressure and all that. And it's the time of life when you feel those things the most strongly. P young people are supposed to be idealistic and impassioned and slightly foolish. And, you know, we just have to save them a bit <laughs> as people who are older, like, don't really need to do this. Anyway, so I did that. Um, the things that got better. Uh, so like many women who are on these kinds of strange low fat diets, I stopped menstruating almost entirely. 
did a real number on my reproductive organs. If I had wanted to have a baby, there's no conceivable way I could have gotten pregnant. And that is very, very standard for women who eat this way. Um, and I understand that now. At the time, I didn't, I had no idea what was going on. And all the doctors will say is, well, you can go on birth control pills. That'll make your period still like, I don't want to go on birth control pills. I want to fix what's wrong. Um, but the thing to know is that cholesterol is actually this really life-affirming substance. Every single cell in your body needs it. It provides the structural membrane for every cell. Like if you didn't have cholesterol, you'd be a puddle on the floor, I'm not exaggerating. Without it, we just don't have any structure. Um, so cholesterol in your brain is like 80% fat. You need cholesterol to function. It is, I mean, one of the liver's main functions is actually to make cholesterol because we need so much of it. You could never eat enough to make up the deficit. You have to have, I mean, your body just makes so much of it because you need it constantly. Um, your whole digestive tract is lined with it, that final layer. And it's the same with the lungs. There's a very, very sensitive layer, the very top layer of your lungs where the air exchange is done. You, you need cholesterol for that. Um, anyway, I, yeah, so I, I mean, just never got my period. It was, I ended up with fibroids, like all these problems. And that one was really dramatic because I started eating animal products and it started to normalize. But the thing that really did it was the soy. And this is why I hate soy. <laughs> I, I finally like read up on, well, I was still eating a little bit of soy even when I started eating meat again, but it was like, oh, you know, I like this or that, I'm used to this. But then I started to read about soy and I was completely horrified and it's the phytoestrogens because they look like estrogens enough that they will lock onto the receptors in your body, but they're not estrogens and they can't provide what your body actually needs. So it blocks access, your actual estrogens can't get in because these fake ones have taken their spot. So that's the problem. So I, I went cold turkey on soy because it kind of scared me. And I'm not exaggerating. Two weeks later, I got my period. From that point till menopause, I did not miss a single period. Wow. That was so dramatic. It was like clockwork after I took the soy out. And I think the cold chill of horror, like what have I done? <laughs> I end up with cancer, like uterine or like any of those female, I'm, I'm, it's the soy, I'm blaming the soy. So that one went very bad. And then it went completely fine once I was eating an appropriate human diet, like just completely cured. Um, so that was a good one. Um, I had such dry skin, it hurt at night and it would like crack and bleed and stuff. And within three days of the first animal product I introduced was eggs. And that's very common. Um, and I, within three days of eating eggs, I woke up and it was like, I could bend my arms and legs. Wow. And it hurt, like it hurt. And I was so used to it just hurting. I thought it was normal. It's not normal. Your skin is supposed to flex. And my complexion looks completely different. And I remember just running to the mirror multiple times going, look at me. I like, I like have color in my, like I look like a normal person that you might want to mate with. Like I have color. <laughs> I don't like this gray corpse. Like it was amazing. So that one was like, it seems kind of minor, but honestly, when your skin hurts all the time, like you're glad when it stops hurting. And that was an easy fix. Just eat some animal fat. What do you know? Oh, well, that worked. Um, then I had that whole constellation of like the, the depression and anxiety and the brain fog and like that constant rage that you can't control. And all of that is just because all of your neuro neurotransmitters are made from protein and then all of the little docking station that like makes the synapse be a synapse is all fat. So if you don't have protein and fat, your brain simply can't do it. And that's why people on low fat diets have, oh, I mean, just you can look at all the studies about how poor their mental health is, but I mean, they have higher suicide rates, um, they have higher arrest rates, they have higher murder rates, um, you know, just terrible bouts of depression. So I lived with all of that. And the, the example I like to give is if I, if I lost my keys, I would just sit on the floor and cry. It was like, I couldn't handle it. Like something so simple, like, oh, they're somewhere. I just keep looking, you'll find them. But I couldn't do it. I was like, no bounce in my brain. It's just, I had to just collapse for 10 minutes before I could resume the search for my keys. So it's that kind of thing where you just have no, there's just no bounce. There's no way for you to recover from like any tiny, little problem in life is just completely overwhelming. And then you just fall head first into that pit and there's no crawling out. And wow. I just don't experience that at all anymore. Like reality is not a pit waiting to swallow me. It's like, oh, well, I've lost my keys, whatever. Even if you can't find them, you can 
figure out what to do. All right, well, I call the whatever and my neighbor has a key and I'm like the locksmith and AAA is there for this. Like they'll come and they'll open your car. Like you don't have to cry, you just move on. It's so simple. It was not simple when I was a vegan. There was nothing wow. there to help me. Wow. So yeah, so stuff like that. Um, Oh, I, the blood sugar problems. I mean, that's permanent. I completely busted my insulin receptors. So I have to eat a very low carb diet unless I want to suffer. It does not mean that I completely never eat chocolate. I do love chocolate. <laughs> Let's be reasonable. I have to be very careful about, you know, how much and how many times, and I will absolutely pay the price if I overdo that or any sugar. So that is just a permanent fixture now. It's like low carb or nothing because it's just bad. Some people, if you if you don't do it too long, you can resensitize your insulin receptors. They will come back. Mine are gone. I think they're gone. just completely smooth. There's oh. nothing left on the surface of those cells. It's just a done deal. Um, so that one, whatever. I mean, you live with it. Um, I ended up with gastroparesis. And this, I can explain that, but it's part of that insulin high, insulin low thing that you're doing all day when you're a vegan. And I wrecked my body's capacity to make digestive enzymes because I suppressed them by doing that. So I have to take betaine hydrochloride every day. It's better than it was, um, but I've been taking that stuff for almost 20 years now and it, I wow. still need it. So, you know, you can bring that back somewhat, but in my case, I'm not sure I'm ever going to get it back all the way, but I don't feel nauseated 24 seven like I did for a decade and a half. So wow. and, and I have my little cure. I mean, the betaine works if I just take it. So, and I don't need to take that much anymore, but I don't think that's ever going to completely repair. So yeah. that's, just, you know, that's the basic out and there's more, but that's the basic outline. Like, yeah. And these things are all predictable. It's, I know the mechanism. I know exactly what I did and how I did it and why that diet is going to do this to you. If you, yeah. if you do this for more than a year or two, you're going to end up with some version of these kinds of problems. And yeah, it's like 90% of people who try this diet, give it up within the first few years and 84, God. 84, I know 84% of them say it's because catastrophic health failure. So hopefully uh, most people can at least repair what they've done. If you continue down that road, uh, the rubber will continue to hit that road and you mm -hmm. are going to end up like me. So let my life be a teaching moment for all of you yeah. out there. You I was don't, say it's pointless. You don't have to do this. <laughs> it doesn't help anything. 